What's going on? Today I'm going to go over some of these these cards from these sets that were previewed this weekend at uh, Pro Tour Murders at Karlov Manor. So the first is the big score. That's this this vault. And we got Nexus of Becoming, six mana. At the beginning of combat on your turn, draw a card. Okay, so you play a pre-combat, you draw a card. Then you can exile an artifact or creature from your hand. If you do create a token that's a copy of it, except it's a 3-3 golem. So that's actually pretty sweet as far as cards go. A lot of applications for this. You can exile an Emrakul, make it a 3-3. I mean, it's a free Emrakul. It's much smaller, but Annihilate 6 is Annihilate 6. So, yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> this card's interesting. And it also comes in a showcase version, I assume. This is the showcase version. And obviously, <clears throat> an extended art version as well, which is right here. So yeah, this looks sweet. I um, Plus, you're drawing a card every turn. So like, it's even if you don't have creatures or artifacts to transform, it still becomes it still draws you a card every turn, which is nice. This is interesting, and the first thing I thought was, I thought the sword cycle was over. Uh, equipped creature gets plus two, plus two, and has protection from instants and sorceries. This seems really good. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you make a treasure token. When you cast your next instant or sorcery spell this turn, copy that spell and you can choose new targets for the copy. This card seems sweet. Um, I, I feel like the last couple of swords that, that were used to just fill out the cycle were not necessarily the best. Uh, I think two of them faded into obscurity. Let's sort by release. So, <clears throat> Sword of Once in Future was pretty rough. Uh, I don't think this card saw any play, and now it's about $4. Yeah, that's brutal. And I think Forge and, Forge and Frontier was decent. Um, this did see some play. Not really a ton, though. And then Hearth and Home was, was before that. Yeah, I, I think that's all of them. Wealth and Power is interesting because it continues the cycle, but the color protections are no longer around. I think protection from instants and sorceries is pretty good. It means the creature can still be blocked, so it's not like making it unbeatable. But it's also protection from most forms of removal. So if you put this on a flyer, like it's pretty sweet. Obviously, all I want to do is cast like Cruel Ultimatum or Magma Opus with this, but nevertheless, we have four other versions. I think this showcase version looks absolutely insane. Um, I don't, this is like the this is apparently a foiling treatment that they're doing. I'm not sure if it's like a... I assume it's like a special foiling for this set. And then there's an also an extended art. I like having options like this because sometimes the showcase version doesn't really do it for me. This In this case, it does. I think it's great. But I do like having the extended art because sometimes you just want a normal version. But I think the extended arts are cooler than normal versions. They're just more art. I don't know. So Nexus, Sword, Sword, Nexus, Sword. Duelist of the Mind... <clears throat> was Nathan Stoyer's world champion card. Uh, Flying Vigilance for an, a star three for two. Uh, its power is equal to the number of cards you've drawn this turn. So on your turn, it's going to be at least a one. On your opponent's turn, it's going to be an O3, presuming you don't draw any cards. Whenever you commit a crime, you may draw a card. If you do discard a card, this only triggers once a turn. To the best of my knowledge... Committing a crime entails targeting something. I think that's what I I think that's what I heard uh, during the Pro Tour coverage. So if you target your opponent, if you target a creature, yeah. So that seems relatively easy to do, but I don't know how I feel about this. I'm sure it's going to be great. Someone on someone in the Pro Tour coverage was like, "So it's an O3 on your opponent's turn. That's terrible." And all I could think was like, Jace. Vryn's Prodigy was an O2 at all times, and it was a $70 card in standard. There's a lot of value to looters that do more than looting. Uh, I think this card is definitely worth keeping an eye on. It's at least a 1-3, and if you have a card that draws you like four cards on your turn, it's a 4-3 flyer for that turn. I don't know. It's a lot of, uh, oh, I guess it's not when you draw a card. Wait, is it? Yeah, it's the cards you've drawn, right. So, and it's always going to let you draw if you commit a crime. So, I think there's a lot going on here. I think it's good. I think it's a good card. I, I'm curious to see. It has big Ledger Shredder vibes. 
except unlike ledger shredder like it doesn't get big permanently so you have to kind of keep keep uh feeding it but anyway fibblethip lost on the range ward two you may look at the top card of your library at any time so fibblethip is now a three guy a three mana gentleman out as a one one you may look at the top card at any time the top card of your library has plot the plot cost is equal to its mana cost. You may plot non-land card. Okay, maybe I have to go back to. I was gonna like. I was gonna say let's go back to this one to see what plot does, but it doesn't give you the reminder text. You may plot non-land cards from the top of your library. Okay, let's see what plot does. Well, it seems like we don't know what plot is yet, based on the things I found online. <laughs> so uh, this is just <clears throat> uh, pretty hard to evaluate at this point without knowing what plot does. Uh, yeah, I mean, I like Fibblethip as a character. I think he's great, and uh, it's good to see him back. Tiny Bones, the pickpocket. 1-1 one, one with Death Touch for 1. When it deals combat damage to a player, you may cast a non-land permanent card from that player's graveyard, and mana of any type may be spent to cast that spell. Someone on Twitter said, is this Ragavan levels, Ragavan level of power? And no, the answer is, it is not. Not even really that close, I don't think. Um, it says, first off, you, you can cast target non-land permanent, so you can't play lands off this guy, which would be great. Uh, it has to deal damage. It has to be unblocked. And it you still have to pay the mana for that. Like, the same as Ragavan. Ragavan is a 2-1 for, for, for 1 instead of a 1-1 one, one for 1. Ragavan has dash. Ragavan gives you a treasure. And Ragavan exiles cards from their library does a lot of things i don't think tiny bones is going to be on the same level as ragavan in any way shape or form um i i compared this to dire fleet daredevil <clears throat> except dire fleet daredevil doesn't have to connect so you play dire fleet dire fleet daredevil you can exile a card from their graveyard and then you can cast it with any mana it's the, basically the same effect except a lot easier to get going rather than relying on a one one for one to get through so i don't know uh, we'll see. I could see decks where you're playing this guy and then clearing the way, but then like, you know, if your main strategy is a one drop, you're probably not playing a ton of lands. And this card also doesn't do anything if they just don't have anything in their graveyard. So if, you know, if Ragavan connects and they don't have anything in their graveyard, you're always going to get a card from their library. If Tiny Bones connects and they don't have anything in their graveyard, you get nothing. So, I mean, is it good to be connects? Maybe. <clears throat> I don't know. Hell to pay. Deals X damage target creature. Create a number of tapped treasure tokens equal to the amount of excess damage dealt to the creature this way. That's interesting. So if you deal 5 to a 3-3, three, three, you're getting 2 treasures out of it. That's not terrible. I don't know. I feel like in, in recent modern magic days, uh, X mana fireballs are just not as prevalent. They just don't see play. Uh, I would be surprised if hell to play hell to pay saw any, any play. <clears throat> if it was an instant and you can go end of turn like fireball this guy, uh, make two treasures and the next turn I've ramped, I think that would be significantly better. But the fact that like any excess mana you're making or any you're spending, like if I spend five to kill something for three and I make two treasures, let's say Arisman six, you, you get the point. I, I let's say I net two treasures. I, to do that, I spent two extra mana. So the point of this is to make mana for your following turn, not for the turn you play it. Which, again, would, would really benefit being a an instant, but they're, they're, it's rare that uh, that fireball effects are instants. So I, I get it. <clears throat> Oko, <laughs> the ringleader. <laughs> Our old friend is back. Four mana planeswalker with three loyalty. At the beginning of a combat on your turn, Oko becomes a copy of up to one target creature you control until the end of the turn, except he has Hexproof. That's pretty good. I mean, just being a copy of any creature with Hexproof is really nice. Plus one, draw two cards. If you've committed a crime, discard a card. Otherwise, discard two cards. Very conservative. <laughs> draw two, discard two. Except if you've, looted, if you've committed a crime, if you've targeted something that they control, uh, discard one instead. Negative one, create a 3-3 three, three elk. So not a plus ability anymore. Fantastic. We've learned lessons. Negative five, 
relatively easy to hit. For each other non-land permanent you control, create a token that's a copy of that permanent. This seems good. Um, I mean, being able to go through your library, like even if you don't target any of their stuff, um, going through your library this quickly is pretty good. Making, just, just making three threes is good. Like that's on point with Garrick. Um, this seems good. Like, I think, it th I think this is a, a, a solid, well-balanced planeswalker. <clears throat> he has a, plus being able to copy one of your other creatures and give it hexproof is, is really sweet. So, yeah, I mean, also the artist is my absolute favorite magic artist. So that, that helps. I think these basics are phenomenal. I like that the, uh, the mana symbols themselves are incorporated into the, into the art. The only one I couldn't get, you have the water drop here. <clears throat> you have the swamp here, the fire here. I feel like the forest was the only one I couldn't see the actual forest in. Is it this right here? I think it's this right here and it's very subtle. I feel like this is the most subtle one because I'm actually not even sure if this is correct. Yeah, I don't know. I think they are, they're all done very well, except for the forest. I think the forest is still gorgeous. I just don't think the mana symbol shows up as well as I'd like it to. And then we have Tiny Bones, Oko Oko, Duelist, Double Thip, Hell. <clears throat> and then this is the breaking news uh, supplemental set, I guess. I'm not even sure, like, what this is. But there's a Thoughtseize reprint, and this border, this this wanted poster frame looks really sweet. Target player, I, I don't need to read Thoughtseize to you guys. There's this version, and then there's this version. There's two different versions. This looks like it's foil. Um, it also looks like it's almost like the lines look thicker. You know what I mean? Like it almost looks like they're it's doubled doubled lines. Like it would be like like this looks like an etched card to me. Anyway, both of these look super sweet. Looking forward to see what else is in this breaking news set. Uh, there is <clears throat> crime and punishment as well. You get the two different versions here. See, again, you have those like thick kind of double lines, those really thick lines. This one looks great as well. Crime, and he's looking over the, uh, the, the, the grave site, I guess, the, um, the hole in the ground. And then punishment, the guy is resting with the, uh, the, the, presumably the skeleton that's in the hole. I mean, that's fantastic. This is awesome. Yeah, these are great. Also, you see so much more in this art. In uh, in this art, you see his almost his entire face here. Whereas in um, this version, you just see like this partial face. So, yeah, I mean, this feels like almost worth it just for the, just so you can see the full story here. But then Modern Horizons 3 was announced this weekend. So Modern Horizons 3, Emrakul, The World Anew. One of the first previewed cards. And of course, there are already five versions. One etched foil version. One retro frame version, which I love. Uh, one borderless version, which I love. One borderless serialized version, which doesn't have new... I, I wish the serialized versions had different art because there's really nothing distinguishing these two. I, I just That's just a preference of mine. And the regular version. I'm going to go to the retro version because I think... Uh, all retro cards are sweet. I, I exclusively source retro card, retro version cards for my cube, my vintage cube, because that's kind of like a theme. It's a vintage cube. It's meant to be like the history of magic and the retro frame kind of, uh, encapsulates that feeling. So whenever there's a new retro frame card or a retro frame version of something, I get, I get really, uh, hyped about it. When you cast a spell, gain control of all creatures, target player controls. Okay. That seems good. Flying protection from spells and from permanents that were cast this turn. Protection from are those separate? Those have to be separate, right? They're separate clauses, like protection from spells and from permanents that were cast this turn. Because it would say usually it would say flying protection from spells that were cast this turn and from permanents that were cast this turn, right? I, I think we should get clarification, but I think these are two separate clauses because typically they're written differently. They want to be excessively clear uh, for things like this. When Emrakul the world anew leaves the battlefield, sacrifice all creatures you control. I mean, this is 
the the madness ability pay six colorless six colorless is a lot but i mean this is pretty cool i don't know i don't know how to evaluate it though 12 mana is a lot it doesn't have annihilate so if you sneak the difference is like if you sneak attack or show and tell and emrakul the aeon's torn you're gonna get a ton of value when you get to attack even if you don't get the cash trigger this doesn't give you a ton of value when you attack. And it's also a liability. So if you sneak this into play, at the end of the turn, it leaves the battlefield and then you have to sacrifice all your other creatures. So basically, if you're not casting this, it's not really worth it. It's kind of, it's scary. Unless they're at 12 or less life and you can just kill them on the spot. But this is an interesting card. I think it's a very balanced Eldrazi. I think for the decks that want this, it's cool. I think if you can pay six colorless mana, it's cool. But that is a lot. It that heralds the end. I'm also really hyped to see more Eldrazi. Uh, I, I love Eldrazi stuff, obviously. It that heralds the end. Two, two for two. Colorless spells you cast with mana value seven or greater cost one less. Oh, that's awesome. It's like a... That's fantastic because my cube actually has an Eldrazi slash colorless theme. So having like a cost reducer that also is an, a colorless anthem. Wow, a col other colorless creatures you control get plus one, plus one. This seems fantastic. And I'm actually kind of surprised it's it's uncommon. This seems great. This is super cool. It feels almost rare. Like it's a it's an anthem. It's a it's a lord, rather. Um yeah, that seems great. <sighs> Flare of Cultivation was one of the cards I did see, and uh, it's kind of concerning because instead of leaning away from giving free spells to, in Modern, they're just doing other cycle, I guess. Flare of Cultivation, you may sacrifice a non-token green creature rather than pay the spell's mana cost. Search your library for up to two basic lands, reveal them, put one on the battlefield tapped and the other in your hand. So, you know, when it comes to free spells, cultivate which is in the name, or Kodama's Reach, is not necessarily the most like degenerate thing you can do. But there's going to be four more of these, four more flare ofs, presumably. And I just, like, I think going turn one, like creature into this, to, to like you're drawing, I, I don't know, is that any good? Maybe they made it so, maybe it's so neutered that it's actually just not even that good. Because the non-token green creature you're presumably going to cast, or sacrifice, is going to be probably a mana dork, right? Like if you play like turn one noble hierarch, ignoble hierarch, land of elf, something like that. And then you can sacrifice that to put a land into play and a land into your hand. So you're breaking even on, on permanence on the battlefield. You're trading one for one. And cards in hand, you're trading flare for a land. It doesn't seem like it's good enough to really be broken. Especially because they're just basic lands. Um, that being said, we'll see. Like, I, I'm I'm reluctant because we just had... I mean, Force of Vigor is a staple in Modern. Force of Negation is a staple in Modern. All of... All five of the elementals, the invocation elementals, invoke elementals are... Um, are staples in modern they're all free so you know we'll see this is psychic frog is one of my favorite spoiled cards this is a direct nod to psychotog psychic frog psychotog it's black and blue for a one two when it deals combat damage to a player or a planeswalker draw a card i like that it includes planeswalker because a lot of times <clears throat> it Cards like this discourage you from attacking Planeswalkers. Like if Fallen Shinobi said whenever you deal damage to a player or a Planeswalker, be fantastic. It's still great and I love it, but it would be even better. But like a card like this, it doesn't... I, I want to be incentivized to kill their Planeswalker and I still want to draw the card, which is great. Discard a card, put a 1-1 counter on it. Unlike Psychotog, um, which would only be plus 1, plus 1 until end of turn. Exile three cards from your graveyard. Psychic Frog gains flying, which means it's going to get through, likely. So, this card's phenomenal. I absolutely love it. 
Uh, there's of course a retro version because it's referencing Psychotog, so it just makes total sense that they would have a retro version. I hope that unlike Modern Horizons 1, the retro versions are non-foil. I would be really disappointed if all their retro versions were foil. And then there's also this borderless version, which looks absolutely insane. Um, and I, I think this one's super cool. So yeah, this card is great. I um, love this design. I think this nod to Psychotog is fantastic. And I hope it sees play. Scurry of Gremlins. Two different versions. Not sure what the difference is here. The second one is foil, clearly, because it's got the star here. If you guys didn't know, if it has a star here, it's a foil card. And if it has just a dot, it is a regular card. Four mana for an enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, create two 1-1 one, one red gremlins. Uh, then get an amount of energy equal to the number of creatures you control. I feel like my voice is going. So you can pay four. Creatures you control get plus one, plus O. Oh, and gain haste until end of turn. This has a real Fires of Yavimaya feel. I mean, four mana is a bit expensive. This might just be a draft card. There might be an energy theme in the set. I could see that now, actually. So, yeah, if this isn't your only source of energy production, um, it's probably pretty good. Do the gremlins get haste? No. So you're kind of relying on this activating the turn you play it. So this is going to give you two energy at the very least. And I think it presumes that you either have more energy or more creatures. So, I don't know. Could be good. It's a limited card for sure. I don't foresee any Scurry of Gremlins decks. This is incredibly exciting. Seeing all five of the OG fetch lands is really sweet. I was looking to update my Magic Online fetch lands uh, to the original Onslaught ones just because I wanted the retro frame versions. However, I will just as easily take these retro frame versions instead. I don't have any sort. <clears throat> I don't have any sort of attachment to like them being Onslaught or them the, or the art specifically. I just kind of want retro frame versions of Fetchlands because I think they look cool. And honestly, <laughs> this looks pretty sick. This is looks heavily Phyrexian based, and uh, this is a pretty sick looking Bloodstained Mire. I'm curious what the other ones look like. That is, oh, I guess we can. I guess we're gonna we're gonna see them eventually, but we can just do that now. Yeah, these all look amazing. This Polluted Delta looks gorgeous. Oh, there's ex wow, wait, so hold on. Interesting. What? Hold on. So there's the regular version. There's the borderless version. And there's an extended art version. And there's a retro frame version. Are there four versions of each? This one has four, yeah. Extended art, borderless, retro, and <clears throat> regular. Obviously, I'm getting sets of these retros because they look fantastic and it's the first retro retro frame original dual lands since they since they since onslaught windswept heath looks great yeah these look fantastic and wooded foothills yeah these look super cool Yeah, so those are super exciting. Glad to see reprints of Fetchlands. A Johnny Nakatel Pariah. And we have... Oh, wait, is this a flip? Oh, it is a flip card. Fascinating. Okay, so when it it's a 1-2 two for 2. When it enters the battlefield, create a 2-1 white cat warrior. So you're getting 3-3 three, three worth, of, worth of value from this. Whenever more one or more other cats you control die, you may exile a Johnny and then return them transformed. So you get... Nakatl Avenger, uh, which is a three loyalty planeswalker. For plus two, you can put a 1 1 counter on each cat you control. Zero, you can create a 2 1 white cat warrior. Uh, when you do, if you control a red permanent other than a Johnny, he deals damage equal to the number of creatures you control to any target. That's pretty interesting. Negative four, each one it chooses an artifact, a creature, an enchantment, and a planeswalker, and then sacrifices the rest. Is that just Cataclysm? Oh no, just go to, just go to Scryfall. I guess I should have searched in the Scryfall box, sure. 
Each player chooses from the permanent series you controls an artifact creature enchantment in a land. Yeah, that's just cataclysm. A Johnny just is one sided cataclysm. Artifact creature enchantment. I mean, they're, they instead of land, they did planeswalker because it's a card in twenty twenty four. But I mean, it's still similar. Yeah, this is neat. I mean, I think it's it's neat because on its face, it's still a good deal. It's a three three for three, and you're getting two bodies out of it, and they're both warriors, which is not nothing. Yeah, that's pretty good. I like it. Lelia the Blade Reforged, now legal and modern, which is absolutely nuts. So I have this version in my cube, this extended art version. I might switch to this version because I really do love these profile versions. I think they're super cool. And we're obviously going to see an etched foil, the borderless profile, and the regular version. Lelia is just disgusting. Um, whenever one or more cards are put into exile from your library and or your graveyard, put a 1-1 counter on her, and then whenever she attacks, you can exile the top card of your library to play. And it also says play, not cast, so you can play lands. And, I mean, I... So Cascade is interesting, because Cascade's gonna put X number of counters on her based on how many cards you exile. So, if you look at, like, Bloodbraid Elf... When you exile cards from the top of your library until you exile an online card that costs less... So I, I'm pretty sure Cascade exiles one at a time. Um, that's what I've seen uh, in regards to discussion about Lelia. So I'm I'm pretty sure that's how it works. If someone knows otherwise, let me know. But I'm pretty sure if you exile like seven cards with Cascade, you're seeing seven cards and you've exiled seven different times. It sees it as, as one. What Each card counts as a separate instance. So, yeah, that could be pretty nuts. Priest of Titania. All of a sudden being modern legal is pretty crazy. Uh, also using the or original Rebecca Gway art, which is awesome. And it comes in a retro frame. So you can either use the Urza Saga or the new modern Horizons version. That's kind of nuts, man. Titania rewards all who honor. Is this the same flavor text? Oh, yeah, they're just printing it like word for word. That's That's great. These also look nuts. These are full art basic lands with Eldrazi in them. And I think these are absolutely gorgeous. Like here's a Kozilek back here, or like a Kozilek-esque creature. Yeah, these look fa fantastic. That is a, that is, these are so good. These are so exciting. Like I'm so torn because on one hand, like I feel like the amount of product wizard wizards puts out is in bad faith. And I feel like they're kind of shoving it down our throats and it's kind of exhausting. And we have spoiler fatigue. And on the other hand, like stuff like this is super cool. And I like, I don't know, man, like I like cool stuff and this is cool. And so like on one hand, I enjoy it. On the other hand, it's like, please slow down because I think you're taking advantage of your consumers. I don't know where I land on it. I'll be honest. It's kind of rough. Snow covered wastes. That's far more exciting than it should be. Snow covered wastes is awesome. Oh man. So this is this set could have a snow theme in addition to a colorless wastes theme. That's pretty that's pretty interesting. Here is the flare of cultivation uh borderless, and here's also the, the retro frame as well. Those look sweet. Everything else is here, all of these other alternate treatments. That might be it. Oh, no, no, no. We still have a couple more things. We have this special guest solitude. I believe it's from Modern Horizons 3. Yep, MH3 special guest. This looks amazing. If anyone's seen like The Abyss, the movie The Abyss, this kind of looks like that creature. So that's kind of sweet. Um, I'm sure considering the the border, the original borderless versions is 40. I'm pretty sure this is probably going to go for like 60 bucks. Because it just looks fantastic. So we'll see. Um, and then we have some Bloomborough spoilers. The first Bloomborough spoilers. Two different sets getting spoiled at the same time, I guess. I don't know why they're spoiling Outlaws of Thunder Junction and Bloomborough at the same time. I'm not sure what's going on. Maybe we're entering a standard format where sets come out at the same exact time. I don't know. Someone will tell me, I'm sure. Vigilance Reach. Six mana Star Star Elemental Bear. Uh, it's power and toughness are equal to the number of lands you control. Okay. So presumably let's say a six, six, unless you ramp it out, then it's going to be a four or five. 
When it enters, mill four cards and return all lands from your graveyard to the battlefield. Wow, that seems really good, actually. Okay, that's interesting. I am... I'm my interest is peak. This is so cool. Yeah, this this showcase is great. It has this Charles Darwin esque like journal entry where it shows like the different characteristics of the animal. This is sweet. I think if they have more like this, it's gonna be this is a sweet showcase version. And then there's also this borderless version, which also looks nuts. This is great. Both of these are great. See, I don't understand people who pick up this version of the card. If money was no object, let's say, let's say all three of these cost the same. I don't understand picking up this one when these two look so much cooler. I don't know, maybe it's just me. Like I value the art and, and the lore and the characters so much in magic. And it's such a big part of the game for me. And when people just look at game, they're like, this is just a game piece. It helps me win the game. Like that's so much weirder to me. I, it's hard for me to almost process it because I'm like, I don't understand how you can't like appreciate how cool these look. Anyway, that's my little rant. And then we have Mabel air to crag flame. Oh, look, this is a totally different. See, this is a totally different showcase. This still looks kind of cute. This looks, this has a very, very strong, like watercolor feel to it. And then there's this, are these both showcases? I don't understand what's going on. This one is foil. So this might be foil only. Other mice you control get plus one, plus one. So three, three. When Mabel, heir to crag flame enters, create crag flame, a legendary token, colorless equipment artifact. With equipped creature gets plus one, plus one, and has vigilance, trample, haste, and equip two. And then this is crag flame. That's pretty sweet. So she's just a three, three for three. She's a mouse lord, and she gives you an equipment. That's kind of cool. And then we have some Bloomborough lands. I think they look very similar, don't they? I think it's like, are they just doing different times of day? They're doing like morning, afternoon, night. Maybe this is, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the different times, but these look, if that's the case, these look pretty sweet. Like if they're doing like nighttime, early morning, afternoon, and evening, like that's, kind of cool and then we have all of the other oh i guess we have even more briar riptide rogue is this otter rogue three three for four with prowess other creatures you control have prowess and whenever you cast a non-creature spell target creature you control can't be blocked this turn i mean that seems fine i don't know if that's i don't know how good that is i really don't I'm sure it's fine. I don't know. It's probably not for me. This is probably for commander players, right? <laughs> it's probably for commander players. Burke, Long Ear of the Law. So we have a 4-4 four, four for 6. Vigilance, when Burke, Long Ear of the Law enters, put two, put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on each of up to two target creatures. Whenever a creature you control a 1-1 one, one counter on it, attack is double the number of 1-1 one, one counters on it. Okay. I mean, six mana for a four, four, it's a little pricey. Both of these seem like the cards that like come in like pre-cons. You know what I mean? Like they have those six mana planeswalkers that like kind of introduce you to planeswalkers. They're, they're just kind of very expensive for what they do. But I don't know. This is a mouse Lord and this one gives your other creatures prowess. So maybe going wide is like a central theme of this set. Anyway, I just want to take a look at uh, the Outlaws of Thunder Junction, Modern Horizons 3, Bloombrero, and, you know, special guests, whatever else was in this. And uh, let me know what you guys think. A lot of these look super sweet. I'm really, really, really excited about Modern Horizons 3, actually. I think a lot of these cards and their alternate art, art versions are very cool. So, um, yeah, let me know what you think. Would love to hear your thoughts. Put them down there in the comments. And I'll see you next time.